Hey, what's up everybody? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. It's been a while since I've reported back here from the studio, but we have two things going on today that I really feel the need to talk about. Getting some sort of retirement vibes from Brody Smith on the Tour Life podcast. And as you can see on the screen here, all the way back to, you know, at least four years ago, four or five years ago, I've basically reported on Brody Smith's entire disc golf career up until the last few years. But very early on, I was very excited to have Brody entering the disc golf space. And I think since entering the space, I think he has elevated the sport in a few different ways, not only by bringing new fans into the sport, um, but also setting some new standards as far as disc golf podcasts go, um, bringing a lot more of that professionalism, um, a lot more of that sort of unbiased conversation, open conversation, honesty, a lot of transparency. I think Brody Smith has essentially done a lot of really good things for disc golf, but he got asked a few questions about what his game plan is for this coming disc golf season 2025, and he gave us a lot of information about what his game plan is. So I'm going to play the clip for you guys, and then I do want to talk about it a little bit. And I'll probably pause these guys along the way to um, give my opinion on some things as well. Yeah, I plan on playing as well next year. I don't know how many events. Uh, I probably will play maybe a little bit more locally at some more events, more, you know, maybe not travel as much. This is, uh, you know, the upcoming year is probably the first year that me and Kelsey will start having the questions of whether or not we want to start a family. So obviously you recommend it. <laughs> obviously, Yuli, you know how that goes and how a lot of that stuff changes. And also you guys, you guys, the people that have been around and have followed me for a while, you guys know. This is like my third or fourth project, my third or fourth career, whatever you want to call it. Like I've been doing a lot of stuff for a really long time. And so it's not like I just started playing disc golf in 2020 and I haven't done anything. Like I traveled a lot, a lot for my last jobs with Frisbee trick shots with ultimate. So I've been doing this for a very, very long time as, as have you, Yuli. And you know, as you grow through life, your priorities change, think things change. And so I hope you guys understand that. We're still doing the podcast. I still love talking about disc golf, but things change. And so, you know, 10 years ago, what I was after, what I was getting after was probably a lot different than what my life is now. Um, and I do want to pause Brody here for just one second. Um, he's not exactly spelling it out for us that he is going to take a big step away from disc golf. Um, what he is saying is that he will likely not be stepping away from the Tour Life podcast. He enjoys commenting on the game of disc golf, but as a player, it seems like there's going to be a huge step back. And we've seen a big step back from him already this year, but I do expect to see a lot less Brody Smith in disc golf going forward. Um, obviously, I do expect to see him on tour life, but I think as far as his interest in disc golf goes, that seems to really be it. Um, he's not spelling it out for us, but there's a good bit of foreshadowing here of him saying, you know, as you progress through life, your interests change. And I can totally relate to that. I do a lot of other things that are not disc golf related. I'm currently training for a half marathon. I'm about to start rock climbing again. I love going to the gym. I love hanging out with my friends. I love doing all kinds of different things. Um, I don't always have energy to dedicate all to disc golf all the time. So I can 100% relate to what Brody is saying. Um, but let's let him continue. But I definitely wanted to chime in and and just, I mean, there's some serious foreshadowing here of where you can you can just tell where his mindset is at. Um, what does excite me, though, is that it seems like he will be continuing the Tour Life podcast, and I think Brody and Yuli um, are two very important voices when it comes to transparency and disc golf and just putting, you know, the truth and honesty and having just pure conversation about disc golf. I think it's really important, and I think these guys are probably two of the best that do it um, in the current landscape of disc golf content in general. So hopefully, hopefully you guys can understand that um let's see here so a few moments later someone again asks a similar question as to what are these guys's game plan for touring next year so we actually get even more information from brody in regards to his plans for next year um and again we're getting full transparency from brody and a lot of people probably didn't like what they heard um but what i always liked about brody is that he does give his honest opinion 
Um, he's he's very transparent, and that's something I very much admire about him as a podcaster. And my answer is probably a little bit different. Like I still plan on playing next year, but um, I'm just kind of going back to when I was single and playing ultimate. That was my entire life, right? Like everything I did. I had the thought and the intention of how do I become the best ultimate Frisbee player in the world? And that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes yes, a lot, it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of everything. There's just so many things that I want to do and so many things that I want to experience. And this is like the conversation that I'll probably have with Discraft at some point and see what they say and see what they want to do. Um, you know, and, and it's like, I don't want to completely remove myself from the game of disc golf, but I also don't want to make my entire life disc golf. That, that time has passed, right? And I know that. So can I still practice here and there and be competitive? Potentially, yeah, potentially, for sure. But I'd be lying to you guys if I told you that I was going to wake up and go out and practice five to seven hours every day and put myself in the same position that I put myself with ultimate. I have too many other things I have going on in my life that I love and I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to sacrifice and do that for disc golf. I'm just, I'm not. And, it- and this is something that again, I find super, super relatable. I used to play a lot more. I used to play in a lot more tournaments. If you go look up my PDGA stats, you can go back and look when I first started playing disc golf. I had to think I had a few years where I played like 20, between 20 and 40 tournaments. Um, Over the last couple of years, I think I've probably played 10 over the last two years, and that, that might be a generous number. I pretty much will only sign up for a tournament if my friend is the TD, um, one of my friends asks me to, you know, sign up for the tournament with them. There needs to be some sort of other element going on. Um, what I think Brody can do in the future is probably just sign up for A tiers and B tiers tournaments. He know that he can he can still have the skills to come out and fight for a win, um, but without the pressure of playing on the pro tour. And I do expect Discraft to transition Brody over to the celebrity team um, with like Ben Askren the MMA fighter they sponsor. Um, maybe Burt Kreischer's on that roster as well. I don't know. I know they've done some Discraft discs with his face on it at some point in time. Um, but they have like a celebrity roster. And I do think Brody would make a great fit to be on either the content roster or the celebrity roster. He kind of qualifies for both based on just the amount of following Brody has. But also the fact that he's still doing tour life, that's still a very valuable product for Discraft to attach their name to and attach, you know, link their name to Brody with that project as well. Um, But I totally understand what Brody's saying. Like, eventually, everybody has a different amount of disc golf that fits into their lifestyle. And I can relate. That's why I want to make this video is because I relate so hard to what Brody is saying is like, I I love disc golf a lot, um, but it can't be your entire life. Not everybody is willing to let disc golf be their entire life. So I, I couldn't agree more with what Brody is saying. And if you're upset with that, that's fine. You can totally be upset with it. But uh, that's just the reality of it, you know? Hey, it is. And, and you know, one of the most important things for an athlete is you got to be honest with yourself. You know, like a lot of people lie to themselves as athletes and be, and they're like, oh, I can do that. But it, deep down, they know, like, it's not possible. And that's not fair to the people who support you, too. So being completely honest and vulnerable, yeah. that's super important. Now, yeah. I can't. Disc golf's my life. Yeah. <laughs> I want people to understand, like, that to be perfect. This is all I've ever done. I've never had a side gig like Brody. I've never gone and tried this or that or, or another thing since I made it my life. Like, and this is something that my wife knows, like, this is what I do. It is what I do. It's everything to me. And I, that's what you, that's what you have to do to be the best. You have to be obsessed with it. Yeah. And I, and I am, I am completely obsessed. You, how long have you known me, Brody? Do you think that I would ever show up to a tour and not practice and blah, 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 blah? No, no, no. There. There's you're, no obsessed, you're obsessed with disc golf. Yeah. There's no there's no way. There's no other option for me, and that's what's gotten me to where I am now, so why would I ever give that up? Yeah. 
And I think, you know, there's just other things right now that I want to, I've always just said, you know, when Kelsey was talking about going back and cheerleading, she was like, I haven't done it for a couple years. I don't know. Like she was really on the fence of yeah. going back. Cause obviously that is a scary thing to do. To, if you've ever, I mean, if you guys have watched Netflix, the, the Dallas Cowboys cheerleading, you know exactly what Kelsey, and that's just like, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So you know how crazy that 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 cheerleading world is. And so her wanting to go back into that, that's a huge step. And my 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 advice was listen, 10 years from now, you're not going to be able to do this. And are you going to be kicking yourself for not giving it a go? Are you? That's that's what you have to be asking. Like I think it's worth the risk of going out there and getting cut. And you know, the, the, that, that's, that's scary, but I think it's worth, worth the risk to do. Yeah. So, um, that's kind of how I view my life right now is there are so many different things I want to do. There's so many different avenues that I want to take. And I am in the position right now where I can do a lot of different things. And I don't know if that's going to be the case 10 years from now. And I want, I wanted to kind of do that. I want to kind of see everything. And like I said, to be, I've trust me, I know what it takes to be the tippity top of a sport. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. You can't really afford to be doing a bunch of other stuff at the same time. And, um, I'm just not willing to sacrifice that. Right. Yeah. You know? So that is the general gist of what I wanted to listen to and, sh you know, talk about with you guys for today's video. I do think there's a powerful message there. Um, I, Brody's essentially saying you have a limited window where you're in your physical prime, in your mental prime, you have financial flexibility, um, whatever strengths that you have, you have a limited time frame to do all of the things in life that you want to do. And no matter how much you love one thing, there's still going to be other things you want to try. And as long as you want to try and do those other things, you're not going to be the absolute best at that one thing. So a, a ton of foreshadowing here. I don't know if Brody wants to go back to golf. Maybe he wants to be a pickleball superstar. Maybe he wants to be this. Maybe he wants to be that. Um, we don't really know. He didn't really tell us what these other interests are. Maybe he just wants to chill at home for two years, start a family, be a family man, Go back to working at Subway. We don't really know what Brody's game plan is. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit as to what, what he may or may not do. But Brody has, you know, the world in his hands. He's very financially secure, I'm sure. They may want to start a family. But the <laughs> the message is that Brody is will be taking a big step back from disc golf. Um, that doesn't mean the end of tour life, but it means the... I think the eventual end of Brody as a player in disc golf, he'll probably sign up for a local event here and there, but I just don't, I mean, he, he's being very uh, transparent. He doesn't really care about being a pro disc golfer anymore, and that's going to lead him into his future opportunities, which I'm really excited to see what those wind up being. So anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this topic. Um, I know there's a lot of you guys that, you know, peop some <laughs> some people are just funny like this, but People like to see other people fail, so there's going to be people saying that Brody failed. I think he was really successful in disc golf. He made a lot of money. He had some really nice finishes on the disc golf pro tour. Um, he had, you know, one or two top threes, which is something I'll never have the chance to do because I'm not a good enough player. Um, Brody did some really impressive things. He started some podcasts. He helped build foundation disc golf to astronomical levels that I'm not sure they ever would have achieved without him. Um, he's very successful in disc golf, and I'm sure whatever he goes into next, he will also be very successful. Um, that just seems to be the, the type of dude that he is. But yeah, let me know. Are you, you happy for Brody? Are you excited for Brody? Are you sad to see him? You know, a, I, I think there's foreshadowing here that he's going to be taking a massive step back, and we don't know what that step is, but it's likely going to happen. So there is one more story I wanted to cover today, and it is Gannon Burr addressing the haters in the Disc Golf Pro Tour um, conference that happened this morning. Uh, make sure you go follow Foundation Podcast. That's where they stream Tour Life. So go shout out those guys. That's where we watched that video I just watched. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen it. But if you haven't, that's where I found it. And then we have Gannon Burr. Go subscribe Disc Golf Pro Tour on YouTube. They stream the press conference and they stream the first round for free live on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to their channel. I just want to give them a shout out so they don't copy strike me again. But let's get into the clip. Gannon addressing the haters. 
Ganon has such a mixed reputation from the fans. I personally love Ganon. I think he's really fun to watch. I think he's got a great marketable personality. He's so funny on the vlogs. And Alden has come out and even said he has to tone back some of the silliness just to keep the vlogs viable to upload on the internet. So he's very fun and silly, fun-loving kid. He's so young. He's so much more on the ball and responsible than I was at his age. And anyone who is, you know, at least in their 20s or 30s can probably say the same thing. Ganon is holding it down a lot better than a lot of us did at the same age. But let's go over the clip here, Ganon addressing the haters. One last question I have for you. Last week, there was a lot of positive talk in the commentary booth. People, you know, the, the Nate and Nate and Terry kind of comparing you to guys that have had some of the best seasons of all time in the MPO division, which has got to feel like an honor to be placed alongside Ken Climo, Paul McBeth, big seasons like that. And as you're playing as well as you are, it seems like there's always this online discourse that says, oh, well, Gannon's playing too good now. It feels like you can't win. Were you prepared for this type of, of talk when you were first getting into pro disc golf? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I definitely didn't think it would be this quick. Um, it's weird. I feel like I've been on tour a long time, but also I'm still under 20, so uh, it ha hasn't been that long. Uh, but I I've seen a lot of stuff. I've made mistakes I can improve on. I think I've, you know, I'm obviously there's still room to improve mentally in terms of like game planning and decision making and what shots to throw, but I think. I'm almost about where I need to be. I mean, I don't, obviously I'll probably figure that out later, but I feel like right now I, I know pretty much all I, I need to know to win tournaments and play consistent. Um, but yeah, it's just been kind of weird, the, some of the comments online and I've, I've seen it all pretty much. So uh, it's interesting to see people's opinions on, you know, my play or, you know, how it affects the sport, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, I'm just so happy to be where I'm at right now. It doesn't affect you. you? Do you feel like you're pretty well suited to ignore ignore them? Uh, I per I mean, I don't care. It's annoying a little bit because I feel like I've done nothing wrong, and a lot of people don't like me for that. Uh, but they can't really pick something out. They say, "Oh, it's a blowout." There's no point in even watching. Where you know, Ricky was only three strokes back. He had made up four strokes in the front nine, and it was scary. Obviously, I, the score says I won by seven. He ran that putt on 18. He didn't need to. Would have been. I would have won by five. Mm -hmm. But in these days in the pro tour if you're up three with 11 holes to play it's not even close to over and i had to play really good to seal out that win um including that ace run that hit the cage and rolled ob um and so i don't know i guess if people don't like to see that type of disc golf then i don't know i guess it's their fault but um <laughs> i'm gonna keep doing the same thing i'm doing and uh, i probably won't change anything well gannon you got a long time so I love this answer from Gannon Burr. Gannon Burr essentially is saying he, he's he's addressing the haters and saying that he is doubling down on who he is and what he's doing. He said, there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. And if you don't like it, for lack of a better phrase, you can eat it, basically. So I really like the way Gannon said that. And he also does take accountability and say there are things that he does need to work on. He's had, I guess, some minor attitude problems. Sometimes he can complain about certain things, but I mean, who doesn't complain? The same people that are going to complain about his complaining are complaining about him. So it's kind of a weird oxymoron situation anyway. But I really like the way that Gannon just doubled down on himself. He said, I'm not changing. I am who I want to be and I'm where I want to be. And he's a very successful and talented young guy. And I think he's got such a bright future ahead of him. Um, definitely a big Ganon supporter, and yeah, I appreciate how much he has elevated the game since joining the Pro Tour. And in 10 to 15 years, there's going to be 30 Ganon Burrs out there. And when Ganon is 30, 35, reaching sort of the end of his physical prime, the end of his competing career, there's going to be... 30 of him chasing him down towards the end of his career and what we're seeing from Paul and Ricky sort of not able to fully keep it together against like Anthony Barella and Gannon Burr and all the new young guys coming up in 15 years Gannon's going to be in their shoes and in that situation and he's going to have to deal with the same thing that you know the I guess the old guard is dealing with now and I'm really excited to see how that all plays out. Um, I plan on being a fan of the sport of disc golf my entire life. I don't see a foreseeable future where I stop 
playing disc golf and reporting on disc golf and making videos and trying to get the news out and getting you guys new disc reviews and making exciting new partnerships and, and doing all these fun things that I like to do. Um, and I'm excited to watch Gannon's career. I've seen Gannon's career from the beginning, very start of his career, and I'm excited to watch Gannon's entire career from beginning to end. Um, but I have no doubt he's inevitably going to become the official unanimous greatest of all time, the Michael Jordan of professional disc golf. So I'm excited to see how that all plays out. And I appreciate the young man for just doubling down on himself and saying, I am where I am, I am who I am, and I don't plan on changing. I like that kind of style. I like the swagger, and I think it's very cool. And I think that's the attitude he needs to wear in his sleeve. And the more he wins, the better he gets. And he's got that fun personality in the Alden vlog. I think everybody who is, again, and haters eventually going to come around. But again, let me know in your thoughts the comment section down below i really want to know what you guys think about both of the two topics i talked about today and also let me know if you guys like when i give my opinion on things report on things and i'll see you guys in the next video check out all my sponsors at the links in the description below i'll see you guys in the next video stay humble live with gratitude and take care